Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage. We're holding our monthly tech meet at my shop, and today we're going to be talking about the differences between the Silver Cloud, Bentley 1s, 2s, and 3s. Uh, the biggest thing with these cars overheating, aside from a plugged radiator, is uh, at, I at low speeds, they don't have enough circulation. Six cylinder block is prone to sediment buildup really bad uh, because they don't have a great flow. And I've taken a lot of these apart, in fact, on my Mark VI or my R Type, you can have an engine block out completely stripped, sent to the, uh, the machine shop to be washed out, and you let it set for a week so everything's dry, and you'll, you'll get in there with a screwdriver and you can dig out that much sediment all the way across the bottom of the block. It takes forever to get it all out. Um, and let's see here, uh, the, the Silver Cloud 1s on the heating system, they have a heater, heater core in each wing. So in the fender areas, up inside, what you'll have is you'll have a duct that comes from these openings out here. This is a strategic location. Uh, I don't know what they were thinking, but they weren't used to stop and go traffic, because if you think about it, the car in front of you, the tailpipe's right there. So it's pumping exhaust fumes into your car when the heater's on. Uh, so there's a ducting system with a blower out here, inside the fenders, and then there's little heater cores. And then it goes through a series of plastic ducting in the dash for your heater and defrost. Now when you go to the Silver Clouds 2 and 3, we'll talk about those over there. Uh, I want to try to cover all this. So, any questions at this point? There's like a tube also on there. Is that... Uh, a tube? Uh, like a duct? Is that for heating, air conditioning? Is Where? Is like a lever on either side? Under the dash? Under the, the dash. If you want to take a look under there, you'll see right by that uh, bajor lever, there's a, it's a crank, wrinkle painted duct. You're right, that's the heater duct. So that's where the heat comes out on your feet. You see that pipe in there? You see it? Yep. Good. And Defrost will come out up here. And the two levers on either side, the black handle? These levers right here are for the bonnet. Okay. This is how you latch the bonnet. What he's talking about is the size of the grid, the delta, the difference in the height. That's delta, right? of the, the Silver Cloud 1-2 grill. See, that's a big in-your-face grill. It's kind of like the new Phantoms with the single headlamp. And if you step over there, you look at the Silver Cloud 3 from the front. It has a much lower hood line, and it has four headlamps. What was the engine capacity on this car? It was a six-cylinder, right? Yes. Uh, it's 4.8, I think. Or, yeah, something like that. And the Silver Cloud 3 is a V8. Uh, yeah, and it's a six and a quarter liter, I think. So, so, so you should be putting out a lot more power then, huh? Well, that was the idea. They wanted to up the horsepower. Uh, the problem they had is they designed a car for a big, long six-cylinder engine. Yep. And when they went to the V8, which is a low, squat, wide engine, uh, they had to change a lot of things. They changed the steering. Yep. If you look at the steering column on this car, it bolts come straight down, bolts to the frame, and then the pitman arm comes down in between the frame. When they built the twos, they figured out they couldn't fit that V8 engine in there, so they had to move the steering column off to the side with a transfer case and put the steering box on the outside of the frame rather than the inside of the frame. You'll see, if you beat, you're around these cars long enough, that they did all kinds of changes as they went. They used up parts, uh, and then also people would order them special, so there's no way of knowing how all of them are, in my opinion. Uh, and one thing that's kind of cool about this one, you look at these, these are resistors, okay? And typically, one of these, well, actually, these, these resistors are for the blower motors, for the AC system. So the way they variate fan speeds for the AC system is a, on high speed it's a direct 12 volts, on a low speed they run it through a few resistors to drop the voltage to make it spin slower. Ronnie, is there any, um, is it easier to work on a one, two, or a three? Is it just about the same? There... It depends on the job, really. Uh, to adjust the valves on one of these exhaust valves is a pain in Really it is, because it's underneath the exhaust manifolds way the hell down there, and you've got to use three wrenches, 
and you need three hands to do it. You only have two, so uh, so it, it just depends on the on the job. To do a brake servo on a Silver Cloud One is harder because uh, the, the the transmission and the frame are a little bit different. Um, there's a motor mount in the way. They look like about the same weight. The weight of the car is pretty similar. They're, they're over 5,000 so pounds. and three all have some of different frames? A little bit. Not much. Not much. The engine mount, or the, the transmission, the, the, the Silver Cloud 1, the six-cylinder engine, has two engine mounts in the front, and then one way in the back at the end of the t transmission. Silver Cloud 3s and 2s, uh, which we can lift that car in, they'll have one engine mount in the center up front, and then they'll have two on the sides in the back, and then the transmission is suspended in there. Okay, so that's why it's easier to work on the servo nuts, there's more space. But I think the basic frame is pretty close. The suspensions are a little different. They, they beefed it up for the Silver Cloud 2s and 3s. But the transmissions aren't the same, right? Yeah, they're, they're essentially the same, yeah. That's a Turbo 400 on... No, this is a GM Hydromatic 4-speed. Turbo 400 came out for the Silver Shadow Series. Still General Motors, both of them. So, Ronnie, this fender is characteristic for, this, for the, the Series 1. The single um, headlight with the indicator up the top. So this is a much more complex fender to make. I would think so, yeah. Um, now, the turn indicator, so there's not a cockpit indicator light. It's inside the speedometer housing. It has two little arrows, okay. like they should have. We also yeah. have, if our gas goes down, we have a green light that comes on. If you, if I think, oh, fuel. yeah, you're right. This does it. No, this does, too. It has a fuel light and a generator light, so it still has that. What his question was is they have an oil level indicator, and what that is is your fuel gauge is a dual-purpose gauge. It'll tell you how much gas is in the in the car, but also there's a button on the dash and it'll say oil or oil level, uh, and you press that button and it'll your fuel gauge will all of a sudden start moving and there's an orange line in there, it's minimum oil. Uh, so you can check your oil and know if you need to add it without even opening the hood, which is pretty slick. I thought that would be done the engine off, but I thought I read somewhere Well, no, anytime you check the oil to get an accurate reading, the engine's got to be off because you're circulating at least a quart or two. They, they hold a lot of oil, they hold nine quarts. Yes. Uh, you, I, I can put nine in them. The later ones hold 10. So, so the, the six and the eight, the same amount of oil? Uh, the six, I think, holds eight. The eights will hold eight to nine, how's that? Uh, it's eight and a half, I think. But, Anyways. Uh -huh. And it's a special oil because of the zinc? Well, old cars, we use a higher zinc oil because the zinc and the oil protects uh, the metal surfaces, especially the flat tappet cams. The government required that they reduce the zinc level and the oils for modern cars to preserve catalytic converters because the zinc going through them makes them wear out quicker. Uh, it's a chemical process. So what would be an example of what I use? What I use is a uh, pen grade. It used to be called Brad Pen. And I think it's 1,200, 1,300 parts per million. I think that's what the number is. So, so I'm hurting myself with my cash roll at 750. Uh, you know, they lowered the zinc in that to, so you could use it in modern cars. So you're not necessarily hurting. I don't know. I just like to err on the side of... I use Castrol 2050 for years until they cut all that zinc. I still use it on the cars, the catalytic converter cars, up to the late 90s. That's when we started using the synthetic. So You can do a zinc additive too, right? That you can do that too. Yeah, they make a ZDDP Plus, I think it's called. Newer cars, and, and I'm not going to include any of these old engineered engines up to the late 90s. Even the, 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 the Arnage has the same engine, basic. The reason for the low viscosity oils, first of all, is another thing that's government mandated to reduce gas or increase gas mileage, so less friction. Plus the modern cars with all the overhead cams and all this intricate um, lubrication they need in them, the lower viscosity will stay in there whereas the higher viscosity will not get up there. 
Does that also have to do with coincidence? Yeah, clearances. And it's not the bearing clearances, because those are the same. Still, one to one and a half thousands, everything. No, it's, it's all the passages and the other stuff they have to get to the top of the engine. That's where they need that lower viscosity so it, they can get it there. I was thinking that with modern manufacturing techniques, you can get tighter clearances. You can only get it so tight. And it's more for resistance. It's more for fuel mileage. So, let's go to Silver Cloud 2.